We're going to get started on what it means to be a missional church. Now, the last few weeks, if you haven't been here, we're kind of going down this little path here. We talked about what it means to be saved. You know, what were we saved from? And then what type of life shall we live? Last week, we talked about what did it mean to be a disciple? Jesus says, go out and make disciples, all the nations, preaching the gospel uh, in the name of the Father and baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to talk about what's called the missional church, which the missional church, missional church is not a biblical uh, um, uh, component. It's not stated in the Bible as a missional church. Um, But we're going to talk about what that really means to us. Before we do that, there are a couple of things that I don't normally do this, but I think it's important to do uh, today just because of everything that's going on around us. Um, and, and, and I want you guys to be saying a prayer at the end of our service today. I would like everyone to kind of gather and we're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray. Uh, there's there's <laughs> there's an alarming amount of hatred and anger that is going around in our country. Um, our country is on the brink of nuclear war. Um, we've got there were three people killed uh, in, a, in a rally that was for hate and bigotry. Um, In fact, the NAACP has warned people not to travel through the state of Missouri because of bigotry and hatred. So if we think that this stuff doesn't apply to us and that it's not in our backyard, I beg to differ, it's right here in our backyard and I don't want to live in a bubble. So I want to bring it to your attention that it's our responsibility as followers of Christ to call it out, to pray it out, And be the face, the eyes, the ears, the hands, the love of Christ. Because the one thing that I know for a fact that will just overcome all of this stuff is love. Jesus Christ dealt with hatred, bigotry, all these different things. And he eliminated it with love. And he has called us as disciples of Christ to go out and represent him. So if we go out and represent him... We should be representing him in love, not in a bubble, but outside of the bubble. Pray for your country. Pray for your president, whether you believe in him or not. He's the president of the United States. Pray for him. Pray for our Congress, whether you believe in him or not. It's our duty as followers of Christ to pray. Pray for your community, because I can guarantee you things are going on in your community that you just might not be aware of. It is our God. It is our mission that he has given us. And the one thing that I know that he's given us that has been free is grace, mercy, and love. And he has also given us the ability to pray. It is our job to do that. So after service, we're going to gather and we're all going to pray together because I think it's important, especially for this community. In a community uh, uh, that we live in that is what's considered an affluent uh, community, there is a lot of things going on. A lot of people suffering. A lot of people are doing without. A lot of people can't pay their bills. And they work every day. We've got this underlying hatred brewing. Man, if you really sit and you think about it, it's an easy way to start developing this fear. But God is not about fear. God is a warrior. God has given us the tools necessary to combat and defeat this crap. So let's pray to him. Let's work with one another to make what God has given us the responsibility of much better. We can do it. He's already given us the ability to do it. You just got to believe it and go act. All right. So you guys with me in the service, we're going to do that. Um, So. This missional church thing, I'm really excited about it because, you know, it's, it's interesting how a church starts to develop. You know, the church has its foundation and it has its leadership and then it has a music ministry. It has a children's ministry, it has all these different ministries, all these different components to it. And so as a church, we, we start to function and we say, hey, we're going to do some outreach here. We're going to do this here. We're going to do this here. And then it all becomes about those things inside the church, which I am going to call our bubble. Our bubble is the church. 
not Bubble Creek Canyon, who is a neighborhood, but our bubble is the church. And all good things we think as Christians are done inside the church. Okay? Great things are going on inside our church. Come be a part of our church. Man, we have an incredible worship team. Our, our music ministry is incredible. Our children's ministry is in, it's just so off the chain. It's over the top. We've got a clinic that we're going to do. Come be a part of our church. All inside our bubble. I don't know about you guys, but I've been to churches and I never could live up to the bubble. I could never live up to what they put out there. They, you come in, you come into a church, you see all these friendly faces. You see all these people, hey, how you doing? I love you. Hi, da, da, da. And, it, and it feels genuine. It looks genuine. But then you start to put pressure on yourself because you, too, want to be in the center of this bubble. You want to have meaning in your life. You want to matter in this church. And you may want to make a difference in this church. But remember, it's just a bubble. And everything seems absolutely amazing. You guys ever been part of church like that? You ever felt that way? Oh, come on, be honest. You ever go home and be like, what just happened? <laughs> I was there for, what, two and a half hours? Nothing changed when I came home. What happened? Yet I was in front of all these people talking about all these wonderful things. And then they top it off, or we top it off. I'm not going to say they, we. We're all part of it. We're all guilty of this. God's going to take away all your pain. God's going to take away all your suffering. Oh, God's going to make it easy for you. Let's just say this prayer. God's going to take it all away and make it better. And then when you go home, outside of the bubble, to what I call reality, how much change has happened in your life? makes church hard. It makes it difficult. Why? Because I think we have been focusing on the wrong things. We have been focusing on what's inside of the bubble and not what's outside of the bubble. And I think I can prove to you today that we have an incredible mission field that we are just not even penetrating. Remember I told you guys, 45% of the residents in Lee Summit believe they do not need a church, nor do they need God. What do you guys think about that? Like, come on, come on, what do you think? Scary. It's scary? What'd you say? Not so. Huh? Not so. It's not so? Sad? Okay. So she said that she thinks people only sum it because of the uh, affluent community that they believe that they don't need God because they have money and they have the things that they need in life. Guys, I just made my point. We are thinking in the bubble. Not one person said that there was an opportunity. Not one person said that there was a mission field. Not one person said that this is good. Not one. Bubble thinking. We're thinking in church terms. Look, our church is put in this community, not for the community to come to this bubble, to this church. It's put in this community so that this church can go to the community. Now, I will be honest in telling you that there's nine churches within a 15-block radius here, and we have a ton 
of work to do. This 45% is right in our backyard, which means we should be excited. We should be excited because we have good, fertile ground to plant God's seeds. What I mean about missional and what we're going to talk about about missional church is getting out of this bubble thinking, getting out of these terms, biblical terms, and getting out and becoming foot soldiers for God, planting the seed. Now, listen, none of us, none of us, God has not given us the ability to save one soul. He hasn't given us the ability to take anybody's sin away. He hasn't given us the ability to change their heart by slapping them upside the head with the Bible. But what he has given us the ability to do is to plant the seed. Well, pastor, how do you plant the seed? If I can't talk about the Bible, if I can't do the biblical terms that I've been taught in my head, how do you do that? How many introverts do we have in here? I'm an introvert. Most people don't believe that. I am. I'm an introvert. We've got a lot of introverts in here. What is the one thing about an introvert? They don't need people. An introvert is good all by themselves. Well, God calls us not to be by ourselves. God said, do not do life on our own. And this is the way you plant seeds is by not doing life on your own. Powerful stuff. So I don't want us to be thinking biblically, I mean, in the bubble. I don't want us to think that this 45% is a bad thing. This 45% is a good thing. It's a good thing for our church because we have fertile ground in which we can plant seeds. Now, see, Jesus once said, if one, if you have a hundred sheep and one of those sheep go astray, what do you do? You go after the one sheep that went away. Why? Because the other sheep will be in the bubble. They're not going anywhere. We have 45% of a population of a city that is not in the bubble. Wow. I get goosebumps just thinking about the opportunity to change someone's life, the opportunity to speak goodness into someone's life, the opportunity to share the differences and the changes God has put in my life. See, those changes in your life, we call it becoming mature. It's not for you to keep. That's for you to share. The Bible tells us that the older men should be pouring into the younger men's lives. We should be mentoring our young men. The Bible tells us that the older women should be mentoring the young women. This is how the cycle of life goes. Our society is completely out of kilter because no one is mentoring anyone. We are in our bubble, we are in our safe zone, and we're not willing to get our feet dirty. In his book, The Missional Church, Dale Guter states this. He says, to repeat the basic premise of the missional church is that missions is not simply one of the functions or programs of a church. It constitutes the very essence of nature of the church. Drop the S. God is a God on mission. And God has sent the church on mission. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, even so I am sending you. Well, sending us where, Jesus? Are you sending us to 1800 Northeast Independence Avenue? It's interesting. I had a phone, I had a conversation the other day with a friend of mine who's Hindu. And I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I'm getting ready for church. He, he asked me, what are you doing today? I'm, I'm preparing my message for Sunday. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I go, well, well, Sunday is when we celebrate our religion. Know what he said to me? He goes, we celebrate religion every day. Bubble. I was in the bubble. 
and I got called out by a person who's Hindu. That's awesome. Because that should be our thinking. We should be thinking about God daily. We should be trying to look for opportunities daily instead of being introverted in the spirit and, and sitting home and sitting and, 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 and not saying anything about the goodness of our God. We should be looking for opportunities. But why don't we look for opportunities? Because we are in a protection zone. We are in a protection zone of the bubble because we have, it's been burned in our head that if you just go to church on Sunday, everything's going to be okay. Gooder continues. This is a larger claim than saying that every individual member of a church is a missionary, though this is what a missional church has become in some recent conversations and descriptions. Rather, the church itself is a sign of that of the kingdom of God has begun on earth. Now, if someone were to walk in here who doesn't know God, who has never experienced God, who doesn't know anything about God, now would they think that this is heaven on earth? No. There's no way they think this is heaven on earth. According to Dave, uh, Verize, an author of a book called Missional Transformation, he points out a few things here. And this is where, if you have your Bible, I would like for you to open it because he points out a few scriptures and he, he's got quite a few of them. So I had to pick just a few of them that I can read here so that I'm not reading 20,000 scriptures. But he says the missional church, this is the, this is the premises of the missional church. The church is sent by Jesus Christ. And he referenced John 17, Luke 9, Matthew 28, and Acts 1. We're going to read John 17, 18 through 21. And it states, and if you've got it on your, you've got it, a, a Bible, a regular Bible, or one on your phone, go to it. Uh, again, John uh, 18, I mean, John 17, 18 through 21. And it states, as you sent me, and this is Jesus Christ, he's praying to God at this moment. And, and, and he, he prayed once for his disciples, his, his apostles that he chose, but then he prays for us. He says here, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world, not the bubble, the world may believe that you have sent me. Ah. Oh. We want to plant seeds in the bubble. We come to church and we want to keep on planting these seeds in this bubble. When there's 45% of our community that's in a drought. And we wonder why society is gone crazy. Because society is not being nurtured. Society is not being taken care of. Now, I don't know about you guys. I'm not a person that's a horticulture fan, but I do like grass and I like my lawn to be good. Now, I know that if I don't do anything to my lawn uh, in, in, the, in the fall, then my lawn's going to look terrible in the spring and in, in the summer of the next season. So in order for it to be nourished, in order for it not to get a bunch of weeds in it, in order for it to continue to be green and thick, I have work to do in the fall. I have to go outside of my little bubble and I need to do work in the field, in the yard. We're putting in work, but we're putting in work in the wrong place. We're putting in work in the church, which, hey, I'm going to be honest with you. There's, there's, we need some stuff done in here, but this should not be our focus. Our, should fo our focus should be outside of the church, and we should be diligent 
and planting seeds in the community. Well, how do you do that, Pastor? Go to some concerts, make some friends. Go to a coffee house, make some friends. Go to some restaurants, make some friends. Invite people to your home in your neighborhood, make some friends. You realize how many people don't even know their neighbors, but we're Christians? <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I'm guilty of it. I, mean, I, know, I know the guy across the street. I know the guy next to us on our left and, and down there and over there. But there was one guy that's right next door to me. I never talked to him. We've been living there almost, what, eight years? And I'm, I had not ever talked to him. So one day he came and he goes, do you want to borrow my chainsaw? Because he saw me out doing something. And we got to talking. And I got to know a little bit about who he is. We're all guilty of planting seeds in the bubble. Now, someone walks in that door, and rightfully so, we're going, hey, how you doing? My name is Corey. Thank you for coming. Why? Because we want our bubble to grow. We want the chairs to be full. We want, when people come to our church, we want them to say, this church is doing some great things. Look at all the people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if our only focus are the people who are coming through the door, then our message is wrong. The picture of Christ that they receive from us is wrong because we're planting seeds in a protected bubble. We're going to call this bubble the 99. We ain't going nowhere. Church is part of who I am. I ain't leaving church. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here. And there's a lot of people here view this, that has that same viewpoint. I ain't leaving church. But if you turn on the news and you do a little research, you can Google it. You will realize just how many people are leaving the bubble. Why? Because our focus is on the bubble, not the mission. The mission's outside the church. He goes on and he says, the church is sent with the cross. And you guys know that, that, that message that Jesus Christ says, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me daily. Now let's break down what the cross represents. The cross represents... Freedom, grace, mercy, all these wonderful things, protection, all these things. But that's not what Jesus was talking about when he says, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me daily. What Jesus Christ is saying when, well, about that is because the cross also represents pain, angst, fear, hurt, agony, defeat. All those things. And that's what Jesus is saying. Pick that up and follow me daily. Listen, this Christian life's not an easy life. It's not. We fooled ourselves to believe that it is. It's not easy. Paul says, every time I go to do good, bad is right there. It's like a thorn in my side. We have to make choices in our life. And I'm 100% guilty of making bad choices. Just like you are 100% guilty of making bad choices. Now, with those choices come what? Consequences, right? So we have that freedom and we have that, you know, some of us, we make those choices and we feel good about that choice. But man, we don't feel good about that consequence. And we run from that consequence. The cross is a part of who we are. The cross is all that we are because the cross represents that shield in which Jesus Christ used on our behalf. So just like Jesus Christ was sent on his mission with the cross, 
he also sent us on mission with the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 states, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. Wow. But we don't rely on the power of God because we're protected in our little bubble. And oftentimes, God is not even involved in this bubble because we are more concerned about how many people are in the chairs. We're more concerned about the little ministries that we have instead of being extremely concerned about the 45% of the people in this community who say they don't need God, which means they're perishing, which means they need to know that there is a God who loves them. And we take the path of least resistance. The missional church is saying this bubble is good to a point, but we need to be outside of the bubble when it comes to mission. Number three, he says, the church is sent in community. Now, this is where the bubble becomes pretty powerful. He says that the church is sent in community. What are we considered? Huh? I think you guys don't know what we're considered. The church is considered a community. Acts chapter 2. We're going to read verse 42 through 47. And it states, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And, they, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. I'm going to pause right there. They were together and had all things in common. Today we are together. What is the one thing we have in common? Christ. Amen. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. What a concept. So when I've had a long day and I've been working all day, I get hungry and I go get some food. And when I'm eating, oftentimes I don't like to eat by myself. So oftentimes I'll eat with someone or eat with the family and then when you eat with the family or someone, your friends, you get to hang out. Or that person calls you out and say, hey, let's go have dinner. I had dinner this week, Tuesday. It was great. Jack Stack. Had great conversation. It was great. Being, it was a great atmosphere. A friendship is there. A friendship is real. Community. This is who we are. We should come together and be a community together breaking bread with one another. It's interesting how Jesus Christ used food to break down barriers. It's amazing, isn't it? So we are the community that has been sent. So instead of us being the community that's being sent, we have become a community that has created a bubble, a protection, so that we didn't have to go out and hear no's. That we don't have to go out and hear anything else other than, yeah, I'll come. Or, yeah, I'll be a part of. Yeah, I understand. 
It's interesting, my friend, who's a Hindu, how they believe. And it doesn't matter what I believe, it's how they believe. And they share their faith with whoever they talk to. How many of us Christians share our faith with whoever we talk to? No, not many. Why? Fear. Why fear? I've been called a Jesus freak. I've been called all kind of names for being a follower of Christ. That is amazing. That is amazing. Look at what this is representing, church. He goes on. The church is also sent to every culture. Every culture. Not just us Americans. Not just a specific group of people, but all the cultures. You know, there's one uh, scripture that you guys often heard me talk about uh, uh, when, when Peter didn't want to eat, you know, a, a certain meeting, Jesus gave him a vision. He, he says, go talk to Cornelius. Cornelius was of another culture. He wasn't Jewish. Peter had a problem because Peter was Jewish. Jesus sent him anyway. He said, I have people there. Well, think about this. If you don't ever communicate or, or, or talk to any other culture, then how are they to know Christ? My Hindu friend, I talk about Jesus. He knows I love Jesus. And we have great conversations. Now, my prayer is that he hears me <laughs> as I plant these seeds. But if he doesn't hear me, that's not my business. My business is to continue to love him. My business is continue to be his friend. My business is continue to respect what he believes. Why do we fear culture? What happened yesterday is because of a fear of culture. This is amazing to me why we fear one another. John 1 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So when Jesus came, he didn't come for just the Jewish people. When he came, he didn't just come for African Americans. When he came, he didn't just come from, from, for the white folks. He didn't come for just, you know, wherever you want to point on the globe. He didn't come for that specific culture. He came for every one of us. And it's amazing how he stayed on point. I only do the will of the what? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I only do the will of the Father. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's the last one. The church is sent for the king and his kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me. John 18, 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Can I be honest with the church? Where's our kingdom? We have been fooled to think that our kingdom is here inside this bubble. We have been fooled to think that our kingdom is our home. 
we have been fooled to think that our kingdom is in our knowledge. Our kingdom is not of this world. We are representing God. And God is not of this what? Now, there's mysteries to God that we will never understand. There's things about God that are just, I mean, you just can't comprehend. I struggle oftentimes when I read scripture because some of the things I read about God. But the one thing that I don't struggle about is his love. The one thing that I don't struggle about, struggle about is when you embrace him, when you truly want to know who he is, he changes something about you. He may not change your circumstance. He may not change your pocketbook, but he changes your heart. He changes your heart. And my goodness, I look at me, I look at my life, I look where I was 15 years ago, and I look at where I'm at now. I'm not talking about anything physical, I'm talking about my heart condition. I'm talking about my spiritual condition. I'm talking about my compassionate part of me. It's night and day. Jesus Christ says, if you are my child, have compassion for my people. Paul says to be renewed by the renewing of your mind. And that is a fact. Renewing your mind of, the, of God's word. But that is just a very small fraction of what God's love does to you. God's love takes that knowledge and it changes your heart and it puts it into action. Not just inside the church, but also outside the church. So the goal here is to, yes, we have to have things in the church. We have to have components in the church. So when people, hopefully some of these people start to come to our church, they can experience Christ. But we also have to have things going outside of this bubble that are making the exact same difference to this 45% of people who believe that they don't need God or a church. And I'm going to be honest with them, with you. I don't fault them. I don't fault them at all because the church as a whole has done a horrible job of representing our Christ. We've, begotten, we've gotten in this bubble. It has become about building buildings and, and building ministries instead of building communities. And we are all guilty of it. But here's the good thing. We serve a God who's a God of mulligans, a God of do-overs. So he will allow us to remove this bubble. And he will allow us to invite these people in and send these people out and bring these people in and send these people out, making a difference in the community, representing Jesus Christ, just as the disciples and the apostles did that changed the world. I don't know about you, but I want to be on the good part of change in the world. And we can do that. <clears throat> so as I conclude here, you have to make up in your mind what kind of church you want to be. Now, I'm not talking about the church in this building. I'm not talking about New Springs community. I'm talking about you because guess what? We are the church. If you raise your hand or if you say that you are a follower of Christ, then that means you are the church. And you have an opportunity to either be in a bubble or not in a bubble. Now, for New Springs community, as pastor of New Springs community, we want a bubbleless ministry. We want a ministry when people could come in and say they're doing, they're walking the talk. 
We want to be kind. We want to be loving toward one another. But we also want to get out in this community and get involved with what's happening in the community. And it doesn't have to be all religious. It doesn't have to be only church-related. See, there's something about Jesus Christ. He didn't live in a bubble. He didn't hang out with the religious folk. In fact, the religious folk got on his nerve. Why did they get on his nerve? Because they was in a bubble. They didn't get it. So Jesus Christ went and he spent a ton of time here. Now, did he forsake the gathering? Absolutely not. He was there. He was preaching. He was spent time with his community. But he spent a ton of time in the community that didn't know him. What are we going to do, church? I'm interested in spending time with a community that doesn't know us. I'm interested in being in a function where I can say, hey, I'm Corey McDonald, who are you? And earn the right to speak in people's lives. You earn that right by being present. You earn that right by not judging. You earn that right by accepting them for who they are. Just like I accept my little Hindu friend Accepting for who he is. It's genuine. It's real. And we have crazy conversations. But you know, I, doesn't I don't judge him, and I know he doesn't judge me. I'm earning the right. He's earning the right. So I close with this. Bubble Creek Canyon is a humorous video. But there's more truth in that video than you ever want to admit. We want to be world changers. We want to be spiritual changers. We want to represent Jesus Christ. We want on that day of judgment for our God to say, a job well done, good and faithful servant. Get out of the bubble. Become a missional church. I want to share a story with you that this incident happened and it demonstrated what the missional church represents. And I could not have made this up. So I got permission to tell this story. Our friend Marilyn, Miss Marilyn, on Tuesday, now I told her not to drive. I said, Marilyn, you don't need to drive. We'll get you where you need to go. Marilyn's heart, she wanted to give the church some money because the church has been helping her, which we don't want her money. She gets herself in her car. She drives down to 40 Highway over in that area, over by the, by the uh, arena. And she hits a curb. And she hits this curb. It busts her tire. And so she's on a flat and she's in this parking lot. I don't know how long she was there. I was wrapping up here at work and I was taking off to go home. I get a call and says, hey, you know, this is a dentistry office. Um, I remember the name, I got their card in my, in my office for those who wanna know after church. But they said, we, we've got, are, are, you, are you Corey McDonald, Pastor Corey McDonald? I'm like, yes. I was like, do you know a Marilyn Valentine? I was like, yes. Well, she's here in our office. I'm like, okay. And they said, well, she's had, a, she's had a bit of a problem with her car. Her car's on flat. I'm like, what's she doing in her car? You know, I'm driving, and I'm, I start to freak out when I'm talking to them. I'm like, I had to pull over on the side of the road. I'm like, okay, what happened? So they share with me what happened. She busts her tire out. Now, no one saw this. She goes into this parking lot. Now, this is how incredible God is. She goes into this parking lot. I don't know how long she sat there, but she sat there and she was praying to God. God, please help me. Please send me some help. This nurse in the dentist office who had no idea who Marilyn was, she happened to see the car out her window. And she sees the lady in the car and she reads her lips. God, please send me help. I need help. The lady goes out of the dentist office 
and then she helps Marilyn. And Marilyn, bless her heart, she couldn't remember, you know, my number or anything like that. She goes, just call Corey. <laughs> Corey who? Corey McDonald. <laughs> Do you have his number? No, I don't. Do you have a cell phone? No, I don't. Well, how are we going to get a hold of Corey? She goes, and then they go, she's, he's my pastor. And they go, what church? So they Googled and they called the church. And we just so happened to have a voice over IP. So it went directly to my email and I'm driving and I don't ever open up those emails when I'm driving. But I did that day. And then just so happened, Uncle Ed was home. I go, Uncle Ed, I'm coming to get you because I, I need some help. But that's not the story. Here's the missional part about the story. Is that this dentist office was so in tune to meeting her need that the dentist himself put his work on pause to go out and help her. When I showed up to try to get the tire done, he wouldn't even let me touch the tire. Wouldn't let me touch it. When he got done, the man disappeared. I couldn't even say thank you. I said thank you to his staff. And we have since sent them some flowers and saying thank you for helping Marilyn. But don't you see what I'm saying here? They defined the missional church. These people were a group of followers. They were a group of believers. When I was he was changing the tire and we were talking. He was asking me about our ministry and I was asking him about him. He goes, this is what we do. We love people and our, our, we use our business as a ministry. So what is the point of the story, Pastor Corey? Point of the story is number one, God loves that woman. He sent her help with someone reading her lips. You tell me God doesn't exist? You tell me that this is not a, a, a good thing? She could have sat there for three days. No one would have known anything. She had no communication. She was afraid. Her car couldn't go any further. Well, eventually someone would have said something. Not only that, I walk in, and Marilyn owns the place. I mean, they're taking care of her. She's got blanket over her. She's sitting in a wheelchair. She, I mean, they just love it on Marilyn. So that's number one. Number two is that you don't have to be in a bubble to be on mission for God. Absolutely incredible. And it, it, you talk about timing. So this is the type of church we want to be. Incredible. I don't know about you guys, but that, that, that story just gives me goosebumps. So I went and bought a new tire for Marilyn. I'm going to install it on there, and she has promised me that she will not be driving. <laughs> hey, guys, before we started, I asked that we would come up and pray. So I'm going to ask everybody to just come up forward here. Just, just come on up. And we're going we're gonna to pray for our community, and we're going to pray... Uh, uh, for our neighborhoods, for our country. And, and we're going to, can you turn up the lights? We're going to pray that we become this missional church. There's power in prayer. And this is something that I don't think we do enough of as Christians, as followers of Christ. We pray individually. I don't know that we spend a lot of time praying together. So I don't do this often. But we're going to do it today because right now our, 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 we are in a crossroads as a church. We're not just New Springs. We're in a cross, cross what did I say? Crossroads <laughs> as a church in general. And I think the more that we can come together and lift God's name up, the more his spirit is going to be out doing the things to bring us together. He doesn't want us separate. He wants us together. That's what that term means when he says, I am in the Father's hand and you are in my hand and nothing can separate us. He wants us together and it doesn't matter what color you are. 
It doesn't matter what your, your sexual preference is. It doesn't matter what you do in your personal life. He died on a cross, beat to death, blood shed. And he knew it was going to happen. And he still said, I want it to happen because I love them so much. And we're here on Sunday representing that. So let's pray to God. Amen.